Hi guys, my name is Sarah and I play a lot of D.Va. Today I'm going to talk about a D.Va game that I played, um, which as you can see took place on Eichenwald Attack just a few weeks ago. And um, in this guide I'm going to try to focus a lot on the decisions that I made in the moment and why I made them, rather than having this just be like a guide for how to play D.Va. Um, and so I'll talk about the decisions that I made that were good and the ones that were bad, of which there are a non-zero number. and. Um, and then uh, hopefully from that you guys can get some of the, I guess, some tips about how to play how to play D.Va that will hopefully be more helpful than just like, oh, try to remember this. Um, on a side note, while we're getting started here, if you like this guide, I have a couple Mercy guides that I did for this. I also play a lot of Mercy and um, a Symmetric guide, so you might want to check those out on my channel. Um, so, uh, so one thing, the first thing to note here is you're going to see me do something that's a little bit different here. Oftentimes, um, especially if you watch my streams, you've probably seen me play a lot of D.Va on Eichenwald Attack where I flank over these houses on the left um, to go to the point. Um, I oftentimes will start at the gate with my team because my team, um, I feel like, will often need to have an extra tank at the gate. Um, and I think of flanking over um, over the houses on the left as sort of a back route that you can take, especially if you need to pull the enemies off the gate because there are just like all six of them on the gate. Um, so that's definitely something I do a lot, but that is not something that happens in this game. So um, I do advocate that strategy and have been very successful with it on a number of occasions, but um, but uh, but today that's not not what's gonna happen. <laughs> So, this is some great dancing. And just as a side note, I feel like the dance that D.Va got in the anniversary event is, like, underwhelming. But we'll put that aside. Um, so, the first thing that I want to do here is try to stay in front of my team a little bit because I'm going to try to deflect um, the damage that gets taken in. Also, as you can see here, I have just paused the, the, the match. I'm going to pause and go back and forth sometimes through it. So, um, so I want to be in front because I want to protect my healers and my squishies by deflecting this damage right up front because I know the game's going to start with like tons of damage coming in. So um, I try to stay in front so that I can do that. Um, but then, uh, and then also, while they're pushed forward, as you can see, like we have these guys are pushed way forward through the gate. I feel like this is probably suboptimal for them. And I want to try to shield my team enough that we can get close enough to them to be able to take advantage of that. So um, so I can't really see what's behind me. I can tell that I'm getting healed by an Ana. Um, but I want to try to be far forward. And as you can see, like our, our you can see up here, our Roadhog already took out the, um, or got Divas mech, so that's good. We can also see that the Zarya is down. Um, and so then, as we go up to the gate here, um, Roadhog gets D.Va, and like two of their tanks are down, this seems like a good time to go in. And so, um, there is actually very little vocal communication in this game. If you've watched me stream, you know that I do a lot of like call-outs and suggestions during the game, but um, that's really not something that, you see, that you're going to see too much of in this particular game. I think there weren't very many people in voice chat, if I'm remembering correctly. But So here I say, like, okay, you guys, let's go in, um, because... because we want to take advantage of that. Um, and so then, of course, one, then the Reinhardt is down, and so this is an extra great situation. So as I come to the point, first priority, obviously, at this point, is to get the Mercy, because she can possibly res someone. I mean, it's pretty fast. It would be surprising if she could so quickly. But on the other hand, there have been three tanks and, that were on the team um, that she was healing. So I know it's probably not too far away, and so I want to get her as quickly as I can. So um, I focus on her, and I even focus on her while I'm getting shot. You'll see me do this a lot with D.Va. Let me back up here. Um, where I have a target that I, that I want to kill, in this case Mercy, and I'm taking damage, but I know that killing the target is more important, even if it means that I might get out of my suit. And especially if I know I have good healing that I can rely on to get, to, like, get my suit back up to full health. Um, that's something that I do, but I have to sort of forcibly make myself say, like, I'm taking damage and it's okay, and try to have, like, an intuitive sense of, like, how much damage it is and how long I'm taking it, um, so that I know, you know, when I need to start backing out. Um, and anyway, so, get slept, obviously, I take some damage here, um, but then I'm able to get the Mercy with little trouble. Um, so, here we're doing some cleanup. Um, and then, once I, once everything is good, I, like, check the places that people are likely to come from. Look over here, look over here, up at the hunting lodge, um, and then, of course, this diva comes in. My first thought, seeing her jump over like this, is that she might ult, even though it's been super fast. In this case, it turns out she wasn't. Um, so, uh, so we want to, want to take care of her as quickly as we can, since she's actually on the point, obviously. Um, but, uh, but even once that happens, um, we see this, uh, we see this Reinhardt and Mercy combo right in here. And so, 
Now here, I decide to go after them instead of staying on the point, and I want to talk about that decision. Um, first of all, I know we have a lot of people on the point. If we didn't have very many people on the point, I would probably have stayed back there. Um, but second, this is like a really good target, a Reinhardt and a Mercy. If I can, if I can get especially the Mercy, it'd be awesome. So, um, especially because she's probably even closer to being able to res now. So, I push in here to try to see what I can do to get the Mercy, but it quickly becomes apparent that she, like, retreats behind the Reinhardt, and, like, his shield is doing fine. He just got here, so I'm not going to be able to take him out pretty quickly. Um, then our, our Roadhog appears, and when I see him start to be in this, in this little fight, I say, okay, well, maybe I'll hold on a minute, because if this Roadhog is going to be able to, like, get this barrier down, I might be able to push in and either and help, like, maybe if he hooks the Reinhardt, for example, it'll definitely help to have a D.Va right there shooting into him. So I hang out here, but it becomes clear, let me back up, it becomes clear they're backing up. Like, they're not coming in. I'm not going to get them. I'm too far away to be able to do much now. The Roadhog's already far enough away that I can't really do too much very quickly. My, um, and you can see down here that my um, boost is on cooldown. So, um, so I give up this little fight and, uh, and go back to the payload. Now, here there's sort of a choice that I can make. I could stay on the payload and escort it, or I could push forward and... Um, and like go through these doors over here on the right and see what effects I could have um, out there. And so it's very enticing to go forward. Um, but in this case, I chose not to. And one reason is that I feel like with the comp we have, I want to I want to be a tank who can protect my team by using defense matrix. And um, and so. For that, I, I need to be in my suit. And so they, this team has been kind of aggressive. I know there's like a Reinhardt with a Mercy out here. Who knows who else is out here? And so at other times in the past, I might have decided to like push through here and see who's over there um, and then get knocked out of my suit instantly. And then by the time we actually need me there as a D.Va, when, once these doors open, then like I'm out of my suit and I'm no good to anybody. Um, I mean, I'm a little good, but not very much. <laughs> so, um, so I decided to stay here, hang out. Um, and then once we get closer to actually being at the door, um, I decide to go through and see what's going on. Obviously, the first thing I see is the soldier. And also relevant is that there's nobody else around him. It's just the soldier by himself. And so um, since the Great Demon Earth of January 2017, um, it's a lot harder to try to fight a soldier solo. But I decide that I'm going to take this opportunity. Since he's obviously already like shooting at someone, he might have an opponent. I don't really know where his health is. So I come up here to try to deal with him. Um, and you'll notice that as I approach him, I deflect it. Let me back up again. So like, I can see that he's there, and then as soon as I walk up so that he could be seeing me, I start trying to deflect um, until I get up close. And then as soon as I get up close, I can see that he has this mercy on him. He's at full health, like this is not a fight that I can take. And so, like, I give up the fight. Um, I also boost to come in here and get this full health. This is something I do a lot on Eigenwald, and you'll actually see, you'll actually um, if you don't do it already, I highly recommend it because this whole like structure that we're in right now, this little castle structure, you, you're always like one boost plus five seconds away from getting that big health in the bottom. Like if you're on the roof on the very top, you can like go down the stairs and then fall down, like you can fall down these stairs that are up here and then you can fall down these stairs that are down here and then end up on that. And so I go back and back to that health with the boost like constantly. Um, so anyways, they're shooting at me, I'm taking lots of damage, time to leave, so I go in here and boost to get the health. Um, so then, obviously I just got my ult, maybe you guys didn't notice, but here I have a very interesting situation in front of me. Um, first of all, we have a lot of enemies right here, and second of all, they're all spread out and kind of in the middle, they don't, they're not in a place for cover, and so this is already looking like a pretty good situation for the D.Va ult, or for me to be able to draw my ult, but more importantly, the Reinhardt is at this end of it, and so what that means is that, like, if I shoot my ult over here, um, he's not going to be able to defend his team, and they're not going to be able to get to him in time. So when I see the situation, I mean, obviously I knew my ult was going to be up soon. The first thing I think is, like, oh, this is great. It's a whole bunch of enemies in one place, and the Reinhardt is on my side. Um, it was on the outside of, the, of, the, of his team. So I'm already kind of looking for how I want to structure this, and I'm trying to position myself and like this is about the position I choose, um, and then I shoot my ult up here. Um, so when you shoot your ult, I mean I got a triple here, triple ult here, and that's like nice. I'm very pleased to get a triple here. But um, you know you could also have done that, and it doesn't work out because they were able to escape or whatever. So you're sort of playing the odds every time you ult, and you'll see later in the game I play the odds and I lose a couple times. So. Um, 
So anyway, but so here you'll notice that the place that I stay is on the payload. I feel like one of the big benefits of D.Va, and really D.Va's job on a payload map, is to be the person who can be on the payload. Now, to be able to do this, you have to have someone who's going to heal you and, like, not screw off about it, who's going to actually do a good job of healing you. And so, um, and so I know that we have an Anna and a Mercy, so even if I knew nothing else about the other two people on this team, they're, um, they're both healing. Uh, or we, sorry, we have two healers, um, and one of them is a Mercy who can do like targeted healing. So already off the bat, it's looking like a good situation for being able to do the kind of good job that I can do as Diva. So it's like putting me in the, giving me the best chance to succeed. Um, so here I stay on the payload, um, and then I see the soldier. Uh, the reason I go after the soldier here is because um, he's by himself. It appears. Um, so we look over here. He's all by himself, um, and it becomes apparent really quickly. That um, that when I bu when I bump into him, that he's that he's low health. So I definitely want to follow up with him. He doesn't have anybody with him. So chase him around, and you'll notice that I shot him as he was running away in the back. This is something I do with Diva a lot. And so one of the things you want to get in the habit of thinking about is when you're approaching someone who's shooting at you, try to deflect. I don't actually know if I did it here. Um, I would if I had it on. Yeah. So like, as I get close to him. Well, actually, he started running away. But in general, as you're approaching someone who's shooting at you, you want to be able to, def to defense matrix, um, not deflect, defense matrix, as you're approaching them. And so this is something when I was new to D.Va, I did uh, very poorly. I, um, I would often be like, hey, there's a Hanzo up there. I'm going to go get that Hanzo. And then I would, like, march up in my little mech. And then I would get knocked out of my mech by the time I got up to him. And so, um, and so now when I approach Hanzos, I make sure that I have defense matrix available. And so I can defense until I get right up close to him. And then I can shoot him in his little head. So, um... So keep that in mind, but one of the things that will often happen is I'll, you'll defense matrix up to them, and then they'll need to reload, and so they'll start running away, and then you can pursue them as they're running away, um, which I did here, although I didn't actually have to defense matrix. Also, just a point of note, you will see throughout this match that I actually do a lot of... Um, I have, a, I have a bad habit of defense matrixing when it is not really the right thing to do. I do I, my, the way my automatic um, habit goes is that I see that I'm taking damage and then I start defense matrixing. And so that's something that I am uh, sort of continuously trying to improve on. But you'll see several times here, and I'll point them out when I can, where defense matrix is like not the right thing to do, but I do it a little bit too much. So anyway, as we proceed, I can see obviously we've got these guys up here, and I want to find out where the payload is because my... Like, my priority here is to go back to the payload um, and push it. So I come back here. My wonderful healers are healing me up. Um, and now um, I'm mostly just trying to support the team and push the payload forward as much as we can. Um, here, the reason I went forward there is because I thought I might be able to get that Mercy before she had a chance to res people. We've got this squishy diva and a squishy Mercy here. So it seemed like... Maybe, depending on where they end up being, by the time I get to the bridge, I might be able to boop them off. And so oftentimes I'll just sort of, like, boost into, a, into an area where there's an edge, and sometimes I boop people off, and it's just like a free bonus. And even if I don't boop people off, I still do damage. So, um, so here I was like, let's see who I can boop, but they both had backed up. Um, and of course I didn't get the mercy in time. So, um... Here, I went after this Reinhardt. I would have gone after the Reinhardt even if I hadn't been, um, been nano-boosted. But in particular, this Reinhardt went way out of position. He charged forward, the rest of his team is way the heck over here on the right, and um, he's all by himself, and so he's got all of our teammates around him. So I really want to take advantage of this, like, moment of, um, of, of advantage <laughs> for our team. So, um... So, also on a side note, taking out the Reinhardt is a really good thing to do in general when you're a D.Va, because Reinhardt can defend everybody from your ult. So just, like, I probably target Reinhardt's a little bit more as D.Va, because I feel like it's, um, it's just more beneficial to me when he's dead. Although, in this case, my ult is at 34, so it doesn't matter too much, but, um, so I go in here to find him, he tries to resist, and then eventually I get him. And then back to the payload. Um, so, as we get back here, um... I, uh, well, I have to run from this diva ult. But, um, now that's actually a good example, or a good thing to talk about here. As soon as I realize that I'm gonna get knocked out of my suit, like, I can see, I know right here, she's shooting this, I know what the map looks like, I'm probably not gonna be able to escape in time, my boost is on cooldown, and so, um, and so I already know that, like, when this ult goes off, I'm gonna be out of my suit. So what I wanna do here is already start backing off, because in general, once I'm out of my suit, my, my sort of step one is 
get like get out of the way, run away so you don't get killed. And then step two is find a place that you can stand and shoot at people from really far away until you get back into your suit. So I know right at this point that it's already going to happen. So I'm trying to leave and get as far away as I can. And then it become, at first I think like, oh, maybe this is a safe place for me to stand. I can shoot at these guys over here. But then I hear the soldier up above. So I need to sort of back off into a more sheltered area where I still have access to people that I can shoot. Um, in general, when this happens, I mostly try to shoot tanks, if there are tanks. I go, I shoot the tanks first, because there's so much delay. Um, there's so much delay in how, uh, like, in the travel time for the bullets from, like, Baby Diva's gun, that, um, that, you know, heroes move around. If I'm shooting at a junk rat, I have less chance of, um, of hitting him. Like, le I'll have less accuracy with my little Diva gun than if I'm, um, than if I'm shooting at, like, a big tank who can't, like, like stop occupying the space um, just from like a, little, a small amount of motion in that time. So I'll definitely shoot at tanks first if I can. Um, so come back here, I'm almost out of my suit already. I get knocked out of it again. Um, and the soldier had sort of a vendetta against me probably because I killed him in the back right in this spot in the past. So, um, so nothing to be done there. Let's uh, skip ahead. Um, so here I'm walking back. Um, I don't know why I walked through over here to the right. In general, what I do when I walk back is I look for where the payload is and where my teammates are, and then I figure out where I need to be. So, um, you can see here that the payload is pretty far from my teammates, um, and although we do have three teammates out here. So, I can't go to the payload, I need to go to where they are. Um, so, I move forward, I can see we have this situation where a whole bunch of enemies are back here, and then there's this like big empty space between the enemies and me. And this is kind of bad news, because, um, excuse me, because I can't really get up to them very well. Like, I'm already using my deflect just for us to stand here, um, and so it's going to be, you know, it's going to be already not full. Um, and if I want to use it to get up to this position, it's going to be hard to coordinate that with my team, you know, they're not in voice chat. Um, so I can't just, like, theoretically, it would be really nice if we could be like, let's, you know, Diva will defense Matrix, and we'll stick to her like Lou, and we'll all move in together. But, like, that's not going to happen really realistically in this game. So, um, so I can see that even though I want to get to the payload and support my team in staying there, I can't do it yet, not, not right here. So, um, so the next thing I think is like, well, let's see if I can find another place to be valuable. So I come up here to get a look at what the situation is. We can see we've got a Mercy down here, um, but then instantly this Diva comes after me. Um, and I need to run away because, uh, because I don't know what her, what her health is. If she, if she came after me and attacked me, her health is probably pretty strong. And so, when I think about the, like, D.Va mirror match, um, like, basically what I'm thinking of it, like, I know we have the same skills, whoever has the most health is gonna be knocked out of the suit second, but, um, but, like, d who has a teammate next to them shooting in the fight? Who has a healer in the fight? And so... So when I come up here, I know because she attacked me, she's probably pretty good on health. Um, and so then I run in here to try to get my situation improved, and I see that I have a soldier. Um, so I can come back out here, um, since I know he's near me, um, supporting me in this fight. Um, then, of course, D.Va comes back again, uh, and I have to sort of make a call about where to go next. Now, I'm back up here. Um, so I can see that she's low health. Um, I know that my Farah's back here shooting, um, or using her alt, and so probably she's not going to get a lot of support right now. Um, and so I decide it's good for me to try to finish her off, and then obviously my ult is available. So right now, still for me, the most important goal is to get on the payload and sort of reclaim the payload for our team. Um, so I can see we've got this Reinhardt here, the Diva's out of her suit, um, and obviously we they're down their Mercy and their Junkrat. So I decide that I'm going to go here and ult on top of the payload. Now, ulting on top of the payload, let this continue for a moment. Ulting on top of the payload is something that I do a lot, rarely to end up killing people. I do it more to get a lot of space that our team can occupy. Sort of like when you have a Hanzo ult for your team, and he like shoots the ult of the payload, and then your team uses it to like rush in because, because they can walk in there safely and can't really be seen. And so I think of it as sort of a way to just kind of clear everybody out a little bit. Now, obviously, if I'm dropping my ult in the payload up here, like, somebody could be crouching on the ground here and not die, and then they're still on the payload. So, I mean, it's not always 100% effective. Um, but so I dropped that there, and you'll notice that as soon as I, um, as soon as I dropped out of the, or as soon as I popped out of my, um, my mech, I started shooting. And that's something that I always, always, always do. Um, so, let me back up here. Um, 
So I jump up here, I pop out, and then, like, I immediately start shooting. Maybe I'm shooting at nothing, but, like, maybe you're shooting at something. And, um, and obviously I'm looking for a target to shoot, but at this particular moment I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit nervous because this Reinhardt is hitting me and I've sort of lost my bearings about where he is. Um, but you'll see I'm still just shooting. And, uh, and I'm able to get enough space to get back out of my, um, or get back into my suit. So things are obviously a little chaotic here while we're trying to push for the point, and this Reinhardt is um, really making life difficult for me. Um, we're able to uh, get things under control until the stupid mercy comes at the last minute. Um, again here, you'll notice the Reinhardt charged forward. It's a little bit less stupid of him than it was previously because he's like ulted, <laughs> or he's nano boosted, so he's stronger out here. But again, I'm out of my suit, I want to find a tank to shoot at, and Reinhardt's great because he's super big, so I can shoot at him. Um, also, this guy isn't paying attention to me, he's far away, so this is a, this is a great target for me at, at this moment to try to, get, to try to get back in my suit as fast as possible. Um, so then of course he's gone, um, so I'm just looking for where are there people that I can shoot at, and then I see some over there. Um, and then that was unfortunate. Uh, theoretically, I should have realized that that was likely to happen at that time and tried to not get too far from cover because, I mean, I almost didn't die from that. If I had been a little bit closer, I probably would have survived. So, um, so that was, I think, a mistake there. I don't know if mistake is the right word because I don't think at the time that I played this game I was as proactive at thinking about the other team's alts and which ones are up all the time. Um, but, uh, but definitely it was suboptimal play. So, let's, uh, get back. So, as I walk back, again, I'm looking for what the situation is with my team. I can see we've got two dead people out here, we've got this person, we've got this person, um, and the payload's up here with none of our teammates on it. Um, so, again, my goal is to try to be with my, be on the payload, but not by myself. It would be stupid to go in there by myself, I just get knocked out of my suit and die. So I want to stay kind of far back so that I can wait for my team to get there and we can go in as a group. But in this case, I see this soldier up here, and this soldier could be a problem for me because we have a lot of squishies on the team, and so he's shooting at where we're likely to be walking back. And so, on one hand, I mean, it's always a balancing act when you decide, when you're trying to wait for your team and sort of, like, not, not like, really engage, but only, like, slightly engage. And so, I mean... That's difficult. But um, but in this case, I said, okay, well, A, I can get up there to him. B, he looks like he's by himself, so I might be able to, like, scare him off, and maybe I don't have to actually win the fight against him, but it might be able to, like, keep him, like, get him out of the way so that when my team comes back, um, we can all be kind of together right here. So, I go up to him. Um, you'll notice that I went really forward before I went up to him. I could have got, like taken the hypotenuse and jumped right up to the roof right here, but I wanted to sort of surprise him if I could. So I come down here, and then I go straight up the side and look for him, but he's like gone. He's disappeared. Um, and then I have this diva here. So again, we're in a diva mirror match where I have to see who's going to, like where I have to say like, is this in my favor or, or the other diva's favor, and then make a call. And I can see clearly, <coughs> excuse me, you can see right here this diva is getting healed. Um, this is not in my favor, so I need to back off. But as soon as I start backing off, the diva starts ignoring me, um, probably because she was focusing on the sphera over here. Just a moment, let me cough him again. Excuse me. Um, so I can see that this diva is focused on the pharaoh over there, and if the diva isn't focused on me, then that gives me a chance to get the advantage in the in the mirror match. So because if she's shooting bullets or defense matrix into the sphera, um, and then that's that's bullets she isn't putting into me, and so I can and I'm already pretty high health, and so this this starts to look again more viable for me. So I come over here. Um, but then it very quickly becomes apparent, like, soldier is back, you can, like, we could hear him, we can see the healing beacon, like, this is not a place for me, so I need to leave again. Um, so, as usual, I go for my big health pack down here in the bottom of the castle. Unfortunately, stupid Farrah gets it first, and really, just as a side note, she, like, barely needs any health. I mean, I know she's Farrah, and she's a target, and she's squishy, but, like, she doesn't need that much health. There's a small health pack way over there, but it's fine. She didn't know. It's fine. Um, so I really wanted this, but as a result, I get knocked out of my suit. And even worse, Soldier starts ulting. So when he ults, obviously, my top priority should be, get the hell out of this room. This is a terrible place to be. Um, and that's generally what I would do. But as I back out, 
I can see that this soldier isn't really looking at me, and he's at super low health. And so I remember this very distinctly. Um, I've wa when I rewatched this game, um, it seems like it happened so fast, but I remember very distinctly thinking, I bet I can kill him. And this soldier's been really irritating to me earlier in the game. And so um, if he were looking at me, obviously I would have left this room like instantly. But I kind of loitered in the doorway just long enough to try to shoot at him and see like maybe I'll hit him. Um, and then happily, I was able to. And so he gets killed and it's nice. Um, and then again, we have a stupid Reinhardt charging into the middle of nowhere. I, um, I'm out of my suit, so that's double good for uh, taking him out. Um, and then I start looking for other enemies that I can shoot. Now, obviously, I'm a little bit riskier here because they're, they're in a riskier place here because there are a bunch of them on the payload, but I do have healing from the excellent mercy that we had in this game. So um, I try to find a safe place where I can shoot um, and some tanks I can shoot at. Um, and fortunately, there are a lot of people there, and so I'm able to get back, or I'm able to get my mech back really fast. And so you can see right here now it becomes available, but you'll notice that I actually stay here and shoot for a little bit longer. Um, this is earlier in Overwatch's history. I would often see people saying like, "Oh, I like really using Diva's gun, so you know, I'll, I'll stay out of my suit for a long time." Um, but I feel like it's a really risky thing to do. And so the so the reason that I decided to stay to like wait a little bit longer here before getting into my mech was because a nobody was looking at me. No one was shooting near me. I was able to do a lot of damage that was like seemingly ignored. Um, B, we had enough people here on the payload, or near the payload, that, um, like, if I wanted to wait and get in my mech and then go over there, by the time I got over there, um, like, one or more of these people could be dead. And so we're doing all right now, and no one's focusing me, so I thought, well, I'll just shoot this extra damage in there now that might contribute to them being able to get us a solid position on the payload um, before I get back in my suit. And so then, once, like... It's, there's not really, like you can see right here, there are fewer people for me to shoot. Um, like, there's this diva here, but they're mostly hiding behind the payload. I'm not doing a lot. Then I decide, like, okay, time to get back in my suit. So again, uh, I want to get back on the payload. And then, of course, this diva ult. Also, did you notice how I deflected the diva ult? I don't know why I did that. Yeah, deflect. It was dumb. I mean, defense matrix. Still dumb. Um, so let's back up. So I want to try to get as far away from it as I can. Um... But then, you'll notice that I come back super fast. I could have walked back, I could have stayed with my team, but I know that I am uniquely capable of being on the payload in a way that the other people aren't, and I know that now they're all running back. Like you can see we've got this Reinhardt, Junkrat, Diva, they're all running back to try to assert their position on the payload, and so I want to be there first and make it a lot harder for them rather than have them like already be standing there with this Reinhardt in front of them. So I race back here as fast as I can, and one of the reasons I know I can do this is because as I'm starting to get close, um, I'm seeing that I'm being healed by our Mercy. So once I'm on the payload with a Mercy um, or an Ana on me or any healer really who's doing a good job, um, I know that I can be a lot stronger. And so with D.Va, I pay a lot more attention to like this UI that shows me that the Mercy is healing me um, than I do with like other heroes that I play because this is really a key decision-making factor in whether I need whether I can stay where I am and like have a big strong show of strength or whether I need to run away like a little girl. So, um, so here I can see that I'm getting lots of heals, and I can really stay there. Obviously, I was trapped right there. Um, so we have this little fight. Um, see what we can do. And then I do a pretty bad alt here in a second. Get ready, it's coming. I make a critical error. Um, trying to go after the Mercy if I can. Um, I'm not able to stop her again before she ults. Oh, this isn't the bad ult. The yeah, bad ult's coming. You can uh, wait for that. Um, and again, I uh, tried to find tanks to shoot at while I'm getting to my position of safety, but there was no position of safety I could get to. So let's uh, cut ahead here. Again, I can coming back from spawn. I want to go to the payload, but I want to be with my team. So I go up to where my team is, and I can see that I have an ult ready. So as I'm walking back, I'm thinking like, all right, where am I going to drop this ult for maximum effectiveness? Um, so, I, I see that Mercy appeared. That was probably the decision-making point for me. As I'm walking back here, we've only got this D.Va. Um, so, like, that's not a great candidate for using your ult. But, when we come back, this, this Mercy, I see this Mercy appearing. And I would really like to take her out. And so, um, you know, at different times, 
uh, when there's more of an imbalance between my skill and the skill of the enemies that I'm playing with, um, like, sure, it's easy to get lots of ults with where you kill lots of people, but I feel like functionally as, you know, you're playing against people who are at your, at your same level, it's a lot harder. And so just being able to get one mercy would be like a complete win. I would totally trade my, my ult for the mercy in this particular case. So what I want to do is go straight up in the air, give it a little bit of forward momentum so it lands right in front of the payload. Um, unfortunately, I did it really stupidly, and I didn't give it enough forward momentum, and you'll notice from the stupid place that the, the ult lands. Um, it was pretty bad. Then this other diva shows me up by doing it perfectly fine. <laughs> um, and so I get knocked out of my suit again. So again, I'm immediately running away as fast as I can while trying to find, and then trying to find a tank to shoot at. So I'm okay there. And because I was healed so proactively, check it out, like, as I'm escaping here, I'm getting I'm getting hit, but I'm getting tons of healing from uh, from my team. I went down to 52 there, and they heal me right back up. And so I was gonna come in here and normally like look for health or something like that, but I as soon as I get here, I'm like, oh look at me, I'm at 150. How nice. So it's time to go out and find tanks to shoot at. So I shoot at the Reinhardt. Obviously, he has his shield up. The reason that I shoot at him anyway is because a he's the easiest one to see, but b I thought his shield probably wouldn't be up for too long. Um, so now we're in sort of a suboptimal situation. We've got 27 seconds left. Um, you know, I'm the furthest forward person with my with my mercy on me, admittedly. But like, we don't have anyone on the payload, and they've got lots of guys over there. In case you didn't see, um, like they've got they've got quite a few people over here. Um, so I would ordinarily at this point want to wait until we had more of the team with us, um, where we could sort of go in as, from a position of strength, but I really don't want to wait very long. And I've got the mercy on me, so I decide that I'm going to try to push forward even though I would otherwise probably not. Um, so uh, mercy puts me in a pretty good situation, but they're really pushing forward themselves, and I see this, uh, this Junkrat tire go. Now, just as an aside, a lot of times when I see Junkrat tires, um, or when I see that there's the enemy team has a Junkrat tire, I'll notice that everybody's like, okay, let's all run away and hide. And I mean, running away and hiding is a good thing to do, and it's sometimes better for some heroes than others. But one thing that I really like to see is everybody shooting at the tire. And I feel like I don't see that as much as, uh, as, as I could. And so here I see that um, like it's going out here, and so I want to find it when it comes out. But at the same time, I need to try to deflect this, or defense matrix, this D.Va. So... I'm trying to back off, um, but also reorient on the tire, and as soon as I do, I start shooting at it, and I'm able to take it out, which happens more times, like, it's more easy than you would think. Um, and because I was in the front of my team, because the rest of my squishies are behind me, the Junkrat, the Junkrat didn't want to just explode on me and take out my mech, he wanted to kill someone, and so that caused him to, like, push forward, but because I was in front, I was sort of uniquely qualified to try to take it out. Obviously, my, my, from the spread of my weapon, I don't have that much damage I can do unless it's getting pretty close to me, and so because everybody was behind me, um, and I was being healed, I was able to, like, stand in this position of strength and, and focus on taking that out. So then, actually, let's see, uh, what happened there? So after the Junkrat tire, I'm actually not sure, oh, we, looks like we killed a lot of them up here. So, um, so as we, uh, we come back here, try to grab the payload, and you'll notice this diva did something that's really good. I don't think I actually do much of that in this game, but it's something that I do a lot, and that is that when you're a diva out of your suit and you're trying to defend, um, is that light behind me? Is that the green screen being weird? It is the green screen. Crap. Um, so she gets knocked out of her suit, and she's on this side of the payload, and you'll notice that she goes back and forth across the payload by jumping on top of it. This is something that I have generally found to be extremely helpful. For some reason, people have a lot of difficulty dealing with this, and so if you're ever a diva out of your suit and you're trying to defend the payload, um, or I guess push the payload, um, try doing this where you jump, jump to the side, jump to the top, and jump over. And so, like, that's act while shooting. Um, oftentimes, you can get back into your alt or into your mech before they even notice. Not in this case, though. Um, so, once uh, once we get the diva off and we're actually moving the payload again, um, one you'll notice that the first thing I do is just watch these two doors. I'm just looking back and forth. Where is there someone that is going to try to stop us so we can stop them? Um, and then. Uh, I was I was really focusing on this left door mostly because most of my team most of my teammates were on this right door, um, and so I wanted to take it upon myself to focus on the left door and make sure nobody got out there unchecked. Um, but then, as I was deciding what to do, we hear this mercy res. You'll hear it in a second. Um, 
And I can tell it's over here, and so I decide I'm going to go try to contribute to this. Um, we've got this forward Reinhardt again. Um, and uh, and so at this point, I'm not really trying to do too much. We, we're sort of limited. We can't really push the payload right now because we're waiting for the door to do its thing and, and the payload to, like, move through. And so this is sort of dead time. And so really at this point, I'm just trying to, like, do some damage where I can. So I'm just looking for damage that I can do here. And then once it becomes apparent that, like, this Mercy's strong, she's got someone next to him, like, I've taken out the trap, like, eh, I did some work, that's fine. Um, so... Uh, I go back here to go back to the payload now that it's in a good position. And um, then, as I'm standing here, you'll notice that our fair alts. So when the fair alts, I feel like the first thing to do is to look for the squishies and just try to help with any existing alts. So I go after the mercy and help do some cleanup, but really, Farah did a lot there. Um, and then I'm in this great situation for fighting the D.Va because A, I have my Mercy on me, B, the, D.Va, the other D.Va doesn't, and she's already at low health and I'm at a, in a pretty strong health situation. So I know that this is, I'm going to be able to win this with her. Then of course I hear the Soldier ult, and so as soon as I hear a Soldier ult, the first thing I do is try to find him and then Defense Matrix so that I can like eat as much of his ult as I possibly can. So there he is, and you'll notice that I'm able to, deflect, or to Defense Matrix the, almost the entire thing which allows the rest of my team to help in killing him. Now, one thing to note is um, if you think, if you know there's a soldier on the opposing team and you haven't heard his ult in a while, you might want to be more conservative with your defense matrix leading up to it. That's something that I do now when I play, although I didn't do it when I was playing this particular game. It was just sort of coincidence that I had my defense matrix available right then. But, um, but try to think proactively about what ults are coming. Another one is McCree's ult. If I know McCree's ult is coming, then I'll try to hold off on, I'll try to use my defense matrix very conservatively so that, um, or Reaper also, uh, so that I can eat those when, when the time comes. Um, so here we don't have too much fighting for a second while uh, we push it forward and they're trying to respawn. So then I come out here and I see we've got this collection of guys on the right. I know um, it'd be really easy for them to take me out of my suit, especially once I see that there's a Zarya here, even though I am being healed. So I want to go and get get out of her way, but also hide behind the payload. And that's such a simple thing. But um, but when something like that's happening, um, especially when we have a pretty strong presence on, on our side of the payload, I know it's going to be kind of hard for that Zarya to get to me without putting herself into a lot of exposed area. And so I just try to stay on the side of the payload and move it from the favorable side to me. Um, in this case, I think somebody is in the payload here, so we aren't able to make it move. Um, and now, um, you'll notice that you may have just seen our Farah get ulted, or get nano boosted up here. Um, and so, I knew that we had a whole bunch of teammates, oops, did I just adjust the volume? Uh, there we go. Um, I knew that we had a whole bunch of enemies in this big open area um, right before the final checkpoint. And so then, um, I see our Farah get nano boosted, and this is like a great opportunity because um, I think I said before that when you're using your D.Va and deciding to use your D.Va you're really playing the odds. And one thing that dramatically improves your odds of, of being able to kill people is if those people are distracted. And so, um, whereas if they hadn't, if they, I, I knew that I had my ult available, ult is really generally good for like, pushing people off the payload right at the end so that we can push it, you know, into the checkpoint. Um, and so if they hadn't, if, they, if our Anna hadn't um, nano boosted the Pharah, I may not have ulted right here. Uh, I may have saved it. But once I saw that happening, I knew that it was going to set them off balance a little bit because they already had to focus on where the Pharah was because she could kill them. And so this puts me in a much stronger situation to drop my ult and they'll be much less well equipped to deal with it because they'll be worrying about the Pharah. So, um, I tried to, so I tried to boost up here to the top of the room and I wanted my ult to just fall down in the very center of the room um, so that it could get the people in sort of both of those open, open areas on the side. Um, so, <clears throat> I drop it in here, as usual, I start shooting, as soon as I get out of my suit, just shoot at anything, you know, ideally at a target, but just shoot at anything until you find a target. Um, and then, like, I get a great quad kill, and that was really nice. <laughs> um, so then, of course, top priority is to kill the Mercy before she can res, which we were successfully able to do, and then we win the match. Um, so, the, the thing that really made me able to be effective as D.Va was having really strong healing, especially in the second half of that game. Um, I know I said this early on, but 
lots of times, um, lots of times I'll play, um, uh, I'll want to play D.Va because I feel like our team needs a D.Va, but we just don't have the healing support to make it possible. Either we have someone who's not doing a very good job, or we have um, someone who is just not realizing how they have to prioritize D.Va. And so, like, this is a sort of an outlier D.Va game for me, obviously. Um, like, a lot of things went really very well in this game. Um, as you see, the most important part, thanking your healers, giving credit to the people who, uh, who helped make it happen. But this is, like, this is obviously an outlier game, but, um, and you can't have outlier games like this without having really good healing. That's, that's, like, an important part of it. So, um, so, if you're playing a game and you're like, boy, I just, I just can't be effective, it's just, just not working, then, um, like, maybe you can't play D.Va that game, and you can't, you can't have an awesome D.Va game because you just don't have the healers to support it. So one thing I wanted to mention is that um, this video and all of my videos couldn't take place, I couldn't dedicate this much time to them um, without the help of my very, very generous Patreon supporters. Um, thank you to everybody who has, who has supported me. Um, this definitely allows me to make videos like this in, with my time. Um, also, if you're a new Patreon supporter and you don't see yourself on this list, then it's probably because I recorded this video before you pledged, so don't worry, you'll be in the next one. Um, but these are all the people who are current as of, as of right now. Um, also, let's see, oh yes, also, um, as I mentioned earlier, I stream um, right here on YouTube twice a week on Tuesdays and Fridays around 1 p.m. Pacific. So, um, I play a lot of different heroes when I stream. I play a lot of Mercy, um, and also, as I mentioned, um, I have two videos that are kind of like this, uh, that are about playing Mercy, and also one about playing Symmetra. So, if you like the sort of the, the structure and format of this video, I recommend you check them out. They'll be um, available on my channel. They're like my most watched videos, so if you they're easy to find if you go to my channel. Um, let's see, anything else? Um, oh yes, um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so right up here. Up here, I'm Overwatch Sarah. And um, I guess that's it. Thank you to everybody who supports me, and um, I hope you guys, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this and that you're able to do better at Diva. And if you have any ideas for um, for like videos or questions or stuff you'd like to see. Definitely let me know. I love to get those suggestions. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in Discord if you want. You can see I have a Discord server up here in the top right corner. You can also find the link in the video description. Um, but I love to hear questions about things that you guys would like to hear videos about. So definitely tell me those if you have any. Um, no question too small. I take that back. Some are too small. But it's okay. I would still like to hear them. So um, I guess that's it. I hope this helps you guys play D.Va better. And um, I guess thanks for watching.